Uh, well, stuff you saw about, about George Washington in Sunday school a while ago, they didn't teach you that in school. If you went to a public school, they didn't teach you that his men saw him down on his knees praying and that Christopher Columbus said the Holy Spirit led him uh, to come on this journey and they don't teach you that in school because the schools are biased against Christianity, well, unwillingly or willingly, whether they realize it or not. And so the devil's job is to twist the facts so that you'll get a twisted view of where you really came from. Now here in John chapter 8, it tells you exactly how he works. And he said to him, uh, John 8, 44, very familiar scripture, but I just want to take one part of it this morning and use it for a text. You are your father, the devil, Jesus told these people, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Now I want to preach to you this morning on the subject, some lies the devil is telling about America. The devil is doing a great job today of of absolutely ruining America's Christian heritage. And and that's why we find it um, um, necessary, I guess preachers do, to preach on subjects like this. A lot of people will gripe because they'll say, well, when I go to church, I just want to hear a man preach the Bible. I'm going to, get, I'm going to give you some Bible this morning and tell you how that these truths fit our nation. You know, somebody said one time that they that refuse to learn the lessons of history are condemned to repeat them. Did you hear that? In other words, the only thing that men learn from history is that men never learn from history. They go right on making the same mistakes that the former generation made irregardless of the outcome. In other words, all we have to do is study ancient Rome, ancient um, uh, uh, Russia, England, all those, and see what happened to them, and we wouldn't have to make the same mistakes they made. But we somehow or another think we're smart enough that we can get by doing our own thing, living our own ways, and, and without no cons- any consequences. I read this the other night prayer meeting. I, I, I think it's interesting. I think, I don't know if this is anything supernatural or not, but have you ever read those, the comparison that they give between Abraham Lincoln and President Kennedy? That's one of the wildest things about history repeats itself. Most of us, most of us heard that. They said that President Lincoln and Kennedy were both presidents that were concerned with civil rights. Lincoln was elected president in 1860. John F. Kennedy was elected president exactly 100 years later, 1960. Both of them were slain by an assassin on a Friday in the presence of their wives. Both of them were shot from behind in the head. Their successors, the one that took over after them, both of them were named Johnson, were Southern Democrats, and were both in the Senate. Andrew Johnson, that took over for President Lincoln, was born in 1808. Lyndon Johnson, that took over for John F. Kennedy, born in 1908. John Wilkes Booth, who shot Lincoln in the theater, was born in 1839. Lee Harvey Oswald, who shot Kennedy, was born in 1939. Booth and Oswald both were Southerners favoring unpopular ideas. Booth and Oswald were both assassinated before they ever had to stand trial. Both presidents, Lincoln and Kennedy, wives lost children to death while they were in the White House. Lincoln's secretary, whose name was Kennedy, advised him not to go to the theater. Kennedy's secretary, whose name was Johnson, Lincoln, advised him not to go to Dallas. John Wilkes both shot Lincoln in the theater and ran and hid in the warehouse. Oswald shot Kennedy 
in the White House and ran and hid in the theater. It's getting spooky now. The names Lincoln and Kennedy both contain seven letters. The names Andrew Johnson and Lyndon Johnson each contain 13 letters. The name John Wilkes Booth and Lee Harvey Oswald each contain 15 letters. Those reveals were 100 years apart and so identical. When you start studying the history of a nation like America, you cannot leave the hand of God out of it. I just, I learned a little bit, and I never was, I never was much on history at all till I got saved. And when I got saved, I started, I listened to those church history tapes, and I listened to things like that, and I started getting interested in it, believe it or not. And I started thinking, that's how we got in this mess. That's how this came about. That's why things are like they are in America. That's why, and it all comes from the devil taking the truth and twisting it and creating a false perception in the eyes of America. If you want to hear the devil talk, you can watch, I've never watched this show in about 10 minutes and got some out, I'd turn it off. There's a show by this old greasy hired Hollywood, uh, rip off, uh, Batman named Mill somebody and the name of the show is Politically Incorrect. And if you want to hear the devil talk, you turn that show on, that's a devil talking to that man. Oh, right, you're getting a little bit too quiet for me here to begin with. The devil is doing a job of making us forget our roots in America. I remind you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, our fathers came to this country. They weren't searching for gold. They were searching for God. And they came here and they said we can worship the way we want to. It's worth the persecution. They landed there at Plymouth Rock, cleared them out a little space. It was a miracle they survived. It was a miracle. They survived that first winter. They 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 uh, they had uh, you know, all, a lot of them died with flu and and uh, by the cause of cold and the persecution from the Indians. And yet they survived and began to prosper. They sent out missionaries and God blessed America. There were times when they would be in battle and a great snowstorm would come. And this great snowstorm would come and they'd think, oh no, this is terrible. But it just held the enemy long enough off of them for the rest of the troops to get there. And God's hand was on America. No other nation has enjoyed the hand of God in the history of this world outside of Israel themselves when they come forth and went across the, the the Red Sea and went into Canaan's land. There's never been a nation with a hand of God on it like the United States of America this morning. Thank God we live in this country. The devil is telling some mighty big lies about it. And the first lie I want to mention is that the devil is trying to tell you that America was not started as a Christian nation. It most definitely was. It most definitely was. I'm going to read you this morning from the Mayflower Compact. You don't learn this at school. All you kids, you go to public school, they need to teach you this. They ought to put it up on the board. They ought to sure tell you this in college. I talked to a guy with a degree, a four-year degree from college the other day. He was a psychologist and had never heard of Lot, never heard of Sodom, never heard of Gomorrah, didn't even know the book of Genesis, and didn't know anything. He's educated. Now, the Mayflower Compact says this, Compact says this, quote, you listening? Mayflower Compact. In the name of God, amen. We whose names are underwritten, the loyal subjects of our dread sovereign Lord King James, by the grace of God, of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, King, Defender of the Faith, and so on, have undertaken two things. They started this nation. Two things. Number one, for the glory of God. Number two, for the advancement of the Christian faith and honor of our king and country, a voyage to plant the first colony in the northern parts of Virginia, do by these present solemnly and mutually in the presence of God and one another, covenant and combine ourselves together in the civil body politic for our better 
ordering and preservation and furtherance of the ends aforesaid. And by virtue hereof an act constitute and frame such just and equal laws, ordinances, acts, constitutions and offices from time to time as shall be thought most meet and convenient for the general good of the colony under which we promise all due submission and obedience. That's in the 11th of November in the reign of King James of England in the year Anno Domini A.D. 1600 and 20. Thank God they came. Thank God they teach that. That should be taught in our schools instead of the proper use of contraceptives. That should have been taught in our schools instead of uh, how to uh, create life. Did you know I, my wife's got a four year degree from the University of North Carolina and the kids, she, girls she went to school with said that they were taught in teachers classes that now in the future that when you go to a classroom that the kid that if a kid really thinks three plus three is seven that you're not supposed to tell it any different because you might warp their personality and put a guilt trip on them and make them feel inferior to all the other kids that's right that's right some of you people just behind times you got way behind in the last five years that's why that building is sitting out there on that hill this morning because we want our kids taught that three plus three equals six. We want our kids taught that there's one God and that one God made the world and his name is Jesus Christ, his son. And that's the only way to get to it. You know, those Muslims in, in Washington, D.C., out there toward that Washington monument toward, toward the Capitol building and say, something like that. And you know what that means? That means there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. And they play, that's the God of Louis Farrakhan. That's the God of the Muslim faith. There is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. And I, as a 20th century American this morning, who stands for what our nation was founded upon, say, there is no God but Jehovah in heaven, and Jesus Christ is his son, and Louis Farrakhan's a hypocrite, and Allah is a fake, and Muhammad is a false prophet. Yeah. Amen? And if you don't believe that, wait on the judgment day and see what the Lord says about it. The Lord's going to come one day and he'll tell you, there is no God but me and Jesus Christ is my son. You know, I know what some of you are thinking. you thinking, you think you're right and everybody else is wrong? Nope. I think you're wrong, I'm wrong, and God's right, whatever he says. I think your opinion's like your, your, uh, your armpit. It stinks and it means nothing. And I think my opinion is the same. My opinion is nothing. Amen. And your opinion is like a belly button. No apparent reason. And, uh, buddy, some of you have to get, a, uh, you're supposed to clean them out with Q-tips, but some of you would have to use a, a oar from a boat with a rag wrapped around it. But I want to tell you what, brother, our, our nation was founded on, and on, on uh, these principles that there's one God and there's one way to get to it through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God for America this morning. I, I never, I wasn't in the service. Uh, my dad wasn't, but I've, I've lived long enough to see what these men went through. Man, I've seen, I've been in the VA hospital. We used to visit this guy over there in the VA hospital in Asheville. And, uh, he was a, a black man and he was such a blessing. Tremendous man. What a blessing that man was. Uh, I, I forgot his name. They called him, uh, uh, something, he had a, a good name and, and he called, me and these guys went to visit him. He called us Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And uh, and we go in there to visit him. Both his legs were blowed off. Both, both his arms were gone. He had no arms, no legs. He laid there in the bed and is still laying there if he's still alive. It's been 15 years ago. And he just has to lay there all the time. And we'd come in and say, well, that's shut up and he's shutting the bed to go. And he'd look up and talk about the Lord. And he'd talk about how good God's been to him. And he'd talk about, listen, Hey, you kids, listen, you teenagers in here. That man gave his legs and his arms so you could get out here by your own vehicle 
and work your own job, spend your own payday, buy your own clothes, go to the mall on Saturday night, go to Chick-fil-A and Pizza Hut, and enjoy your freedom in America. You ought to thank God for what our nation was built on this morning, and it was started as a Christian nation. John Lennon was a traitor. Marilyn Manson, the traitor. And Jane Fonda was a traitor. Listen, if America is so terrible, why don't they move? Why don't they just move somewhere? Like Nigeria. Or East Germany. Have you ever been to Germany? I've been to Germany. You know what they do on TV? They put the prettiest sights of the Bahamas on TV to get your money to get you to go there. Let me tell you, man, 90% of it don't look like that. It's like Florida. You, when you, when people hear you think of Florida, you think as soon as you cross the Florida line, everything's Disney World and great big palm trees and all the girls are beautiful and everybody drives a nice car and it's all, you are bad mistaken. Bad mistaken. You're out of your mind, man. 90% of Florida, ask anybody else live there, 90% of Florida is not like that. It's cockroaches that long. That's why you wear them boots down there, man, so you can get them when they go in the corner. You gotta have sharp pointed shoes. So, man, them things got gut. I mean, they're this big. It's, it's, it's a love bugs. They get all over the front of your car and take the paint off of it. It's run down and stuccoed houses and trailer parks, rednecks, just like we are here in North Carolina. But I want to tell you what, this morning, they'll put those other countries on there. That's another lie the devil's telling about America. He's telling America is inferior to other countries. You know how kids are being taught nowadays? They're being taught that, oh, we should really go, we should work. That's why the Beatles brought those Eastern religions in here. You know, when the Beatles started traveling to see Rosh Hashanish, Rosh and all them people, them people are like that, you start seeing the Beatles going around with these gurus, and they were playing this music, you know, and, and taking all these psychedelic drugs. They were bringing Eastern religion to America, and now Americans, educated Americans, think that it's smart to go somewhere in a building and sit and do like this, you know, and tie yourself up, and sit here and go, you open yourself up for a demon, man. That ain't gonna make you no smarter. That ain't gonna make you no richer. That ain't gonna help you a bit. Now, the Bible talks about the right kind of meditation, and He said, "I'll meditate on Thy Word day and night." That's the right kind of meditation. This other stuff's of the devil. Listen, America is not inferior to other nations. I had a missionary in my house. A few weeks ago, we, we took him home and fed him dinner. My wife cooked a big dinner and we fed him. And he told me, he said, where I live, it cost me $80 to fill my car up with gas. Anybody got any gripes here this morning? I was looking at it the other day, dollar nineteen, <laughs> And it ought to be cheaper but it ain't eighty dollars to fill up. My four hundred cost about eighteen dollars to fill up. I ain't liking everything about America, but I'll take it till we get to heaven. God, another country told me not long ago. And Germany is a great country. Germany is a great country, very smart, very intelligent people, and it's it is a great country. But the problem is that they don't honor most of them don't honor the true God and the true Bible. You know what he told me? He said, in one part, one country over there, meat, meat, like hamburger meat, steak, is like uh, something like $100 a pound. $100 a pound. I can go to the Frisbees or Galaxy or whichever one it is now, or Angles, or whichever one of these I want, and buy that, that much hamburger and go home and fix them all and give the one the kids don't eat to Cinnabon. Yeah. And don't think nothing about it. This ain't heaven, but this will do till we get there. Amen? We can get in our car. I, I can stand up here. Did you know in a lot of nations this morning that a preacher's not allowed to say anything like what I've said here today? 
Thank God we live in America. We sent out more missionaries. Have you ever been to Haiti? It's awful. I'm telling you what, it is awful. I tell you, I have, I, have, I didn't know there was such a thing as a skinny pig. The last thing, I didn't think pigs could be skinny. I thought some they'll eat, any, they'll eat roots, they'll eat. I seen a pig in Haiti, it looked like a dog, is about that wide. And it's bone sticking out, pig that eye. Son, when the pigs are bony, things are tough, you know what? Things are bad, buddy, when the pigs are skinny. <laughs> and ain't nothing to eat. Go. We sat down there to eat in the motel. They fixed us a meal, put it down there. Brother Page was up there. He was with us. Remember that, Brother Page? They told us, they, I said, man, this meat's got a little wing to it. Said, what kind of pork chops is this? They said, that's not pork chop. That's goat. I said, this is goat, and I done eat it. <laughs> that's right. Goat meat. Goats ain't made to be eat. I don't know what they're made for, but it ain't to eat. Milk, I reckon. If Russia's so great, if East Germany, East Germany's so great, why do they build walls around it to keep the people in, as somebody mentioned earlier? I'm glad we live in America because anybody in here, you don't have to be born, you know, like in other countries, England, stuff like that, you'd have to be born like Prince Charles or somebody in order to be big or great to grow up. Let me tell you some stories in America. And I'll hurry and I'll be through. John Adams was the second president of the United States. He was the son of a grocer, a man who made groceries, in a very moderate mean. The only start he had was a good education. He became president of the United States. His daddy ran a grocery store. Andrew Jackson was born in a log hut in North Carolina and was reared in the woods in Pine for which his, his state is famous. Grew up in the woods of North Carolina. Grew up and became the president. James Polk spent the early years of his life helping to dig out a living on a farm in North Carolina. He was afterward a clerk in a country store and then rose to the highest office in the land. No other place can you go from a log cabin in poverty and a nobody to be president of the United States of America. God bless America this morning. Last thing I'll say this morning, I'm going to be through this is another lie the devil's telling about our nation. And this is awful. The devil's telling us that we can kick God out and still continue to prosper just like we always have. It's not true. The Bible said, Blessed is the nation as God is the Lord. And the Bible still says, The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. And if there's ever been a time when our nation needs to get back on our knees and back to God, it's now. 1962, our Supreme Court. Do you realize that about the turn of the century, about 1900, there was a fella in a university, fired, lost his job, a science teacher for teaching something that's contrary to the Bible. Come a long way in this last hundred years, ain't <laughs> He taught something against the Bible and fired him out of a university, man. Now they can stand up and make fun of the Bible and dare you to challenge them. We can't kick God out and continue to prosper America and God will bring this nation to our knees one way or another. I love America and I thank God for America and I'm proud to be an American. But our nation's in trouble this morning. And I can tell you where our help's going to have to start, people. It's going to have to start. You can say, well, we're going to try to get prayer back in schools. Forget it. Oh, we're trying to get some so and so in the White House. The schoolhouse or the White House ain't going to help us. The answer to our problems in America is going to have to start right there. It's going to start in our pulpit and it's going to get in the pews and it's going to help our country find out where we're supposed to be and get back where we need to be with God. Some of you people sitting right here this morning, you used to live for the Lord. You used to be on fire for God. You couldn't wait to get to church. You wouldn't miss service for nothing. I mean, you love the Bible. You love, you're, you push your, and now you just kind of drag along and hit and miss and it don't really matter to you if you come or you don't come. 
That's what's wrong with America. It's apathy, brother. We just don't care no more. God's been so good to us. We don't care like we did. Some of you young people right here. I've sat up here talking about camps. They'll be there. Listen, youth camp is the greatest thing that's ever happened for our young people. Listen, hey, 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 I'm telling you, there's nothing, nothing that's done for our young people like the youth camp, what God did out there. Don't miss it. I wouldn't miss it for nothing. I wouldn't miss it for a job. I wouldn't miss it for a vacation. You say, well, it's hot. It's, it's a place a whole lot hotter than camp. I can tell you that. And we can go out there and shout because we're not going. And we can rejoice. Youth camp's coming up. Summer's coming up. Camp meeting's coming up. We've got to start right here getting back to God where we need to be. Right here is where it's got to start. I'll tell you what's wrong with some of y'all. You got your feelings hurt. Or you got offended. Or you got disappointed. Or you got hurt. And you've let the devil use that on there where you ain't worth a dime for God. You know what you got to do? You got to toughen up like them soldiers did. Get a little tough, man. Get you, Swallow your feelings. Say, okay, this happened. Okay, I'm not going to let it ruin my rest of my life. I'm going to get on fire for God. I'm going to be a witness. I'm going to be faithful to church. I'm going to get in there. I'm going to do my life and live it the way the Lord wants me to. Don't let the devil tell you a lie about this great nation. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. This morning we're going to take just a minute. Not long, just a minute. And we're going to pray. Right where you stand this morning, I'd like to ask you. You don't have to come to the altar, you can if you want to. Some are already coming. But right now, where you stand right now with your head bowed, I wonder if you would just talk to the Lord. How long has it been since you talked to Him? How long has it been since you prayed? And you may say, well, I don't even understand all this stuff, preacher. Why are you screaming, hollering, all that? Well, that's the definition of preach. Get you a dictionary. The Bible says, preach the Word. Are you ready to meet God this morning? If you died today, do you know for a fact you'd go to heaven when you leave here? If you died this evening on your way home, do you know for a fact you're a Christian? I want to tell you something. You can be saved right here this morning. How about some of you mamas and daddies? Some of you used to be so fired up for God and now you've just let the devil just knock you down and knock you down and knock you down. Why don't you just right now where you stand... Right now, where you stand, say, Lord, I'm going to get back in there. I'm going to be faithful. God, I'm going to get back in there on fire for God. I'm going to make this. We ain't got but less than six months now, man, to the end of the millennium. Less than six months. The Lord may be coming. I don't know. If you're here this morning, you're not saved. You can come and be saved. Somebody will take the Bible and show you how to be saved. If you're here this morning, you need to come for any other reason. You feel free to come. But talk to God right now in your heart. You can be saved right there where you stand. Just pray that simple prayer. Dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. I believe you died for my sins. And right now, the best way I know how, I trust you as my Savior. And my only hope for a home in heaven. I believe you died for me. And now, I'm going to live for you. Heavenly Father, take these few thoughts this morning. Drive them home in the hearts of each individual here this morning. I pray the Holy Spirit of God would move on every individual here today. And let us leave here with our hearts right with you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen.